Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Billy, Gym City Welding. Uh, just wanted to uh, welcome all the new subscribers and uh, those of you that still follow along. Thank you for coming back and checking out the channel. Um, we're not out in the garage today. We're actually here in my basement. Uh, I've got a basement workshop I use in the wintertime when it's freezing ass cold outside, which it is right now. Um, so changing the pace a little bit today. Going to show you some stuff I've been uh, some new parts I've got for the Impala and uh, I'm going to talk about some hydraulic history uh, specifically uh, gate pumps lift gate pumps um, and just go over some of that stuff and and uh, talk about that and uh, talk about the big announcement I announced in the last video we'll touch more on that today uh, wearing my low riding United t-shirt thank you China man I appreciate you buddy if you guys, if anyone's looking for one of these from China Man, hit him up on Instagram, uh, Concrete Row 64 or Low Riding United. Uh, he has a page on there for those. So yeah, let me get you flipped around and show you kind of what I got going on down here in the in the basement. Yeah, so I got a basement workshop, nothing super fancy, just a place for me to hang out in the winter time. It's it's a pretty pretty big mess right now just because I haven't had time to come down here and really do much because of work and holidays that's the other thing Christmas and Thanksgiving and whatnot but uh I do a lot of model cars in the winter time it just keeps me busy it keeps me going uh when you know when you have downtime you can't be out in the garage because it's so damn cold and you know I could be but um I could be out there right now you run in the heater and stuff but I'm telling you it's like we we literally got um a blizzard warning or blizzard i don't know how notification i guess from cincinnati airport which isn't too far from where i'm at which uh i guess you have to beat certain criteria to be considered a blizzard and yeah it, it, we hit it the other day uh with the the real fuel temperature was like minus 31 or something like that and it just it snowed and snowed and snowed um yeah so i come down here Gives me a chance to watch my old school car show videos. I got my Trucha. Yes, these are VHS for you younger folks. That's what they look like. Lowrider History of Hydraulics, which is kind of appropriate for what we're talking about today. Cali Swangin. Shout out to KJ. If you ever see this, bro, we need some more of these uh, transferred over to DVD. Got some Trucha. Got my VHS player. So, yeah, I don't know. Just a place to hang out. And uh, keeps me sane during the winter months when I can't be outside. So um, so I got some new parts for the car. Kind of a big deal since the last video. I, I know that was like the uh, uh, rear end video from uh, Pitbull. But I got some new coils. Uh, these are full stack, three and three quarter ton. Uh, shout out to Switches by Jay for getting me the hookup on those, which are, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody out there in YouTube lands trying to buy coils right now for a car, but whoo, they are hard to come by, especially where I'm at. Uh, the other thing, guys, a clutch fan for my 327. Yeah, I didn't have to have this, but something in my brain just said, hey, go OG on this engine. Make it look like it's 1964 under the hood. So, got me a clutch fan, I'm pretty excited about it. And it's actually the correct uh, 327 fan. Found that on eBay, a uh, guy made me a heck of a deal on it. So I'm pretty pretty stoked about that. And uh, like I said, just working on my model cars. I like all kinds of cars. I'm, it's not limited to just low riders. I like to build a little bit of everything. And I'll be honest with you, this is kind of like the test bed for what I'm doing on my actual car. Just because I've talked about this before on like my Instagram. I've built this exact car probably a dozen times when I was a kid. And now building one that's, you know, one to one scale. It's, it's pretty surreal actually, because you get to think about all the things you would have done as a kid. And then now as an adult and it's like, okay, yeah, I see how that wouldn't have worked or whatnot, but this is kind of keeps me going and keeps me focused. 
Um, so that's pretty much it for that kind of stuff. I'm also working on a 57. So building a, it's gonna be a hopper, actually fully, uh, sorry, fully working suspension, be fully adjustable. There we go. Oh, let's try this again. Yeah, so you get the idea. It's got actual coils in there. It's in a pretty rough stage right now, but it'll be pretty nice eventually. So I'm gonna uh, get you set up on the tripod and we'll talk about what this video is actually about, which is uh, some history on hydraulics. So if that thing interests you, please stick around um, and uh, We'll, we'll talk about that, so hang tight. All right, so what I have set up here is, uh, I kind of wanted to demonstrate like the evolution of a uh, gate style pump. Um, I've thought about this for a couple days actually, uh, how I was going to approach this because I'll be the first one to tell you that I am not an expert. Um, everything I'm gonna say in this video, I'm just going off memory and I'm sure, you know, some of you out there will understand the ever, you ever get to a point to where you studied something so much and learned about something so much and then time passes by and you forget half of what you learned. That's kind of where I'm at. And the, and the reason I say that is because when I was a kid, uh, first learning about this stuff, I used to eat, sleep, breathe hydraulics. That's, that was kind of my go-to when it came to the low riding stuff when I finally discovered it was because it was they were to me it was like transformers right you grew up as a kid you played with transformers and they moved and did all these things well this is what made the cars do it so naturally I gravitated towards that but I remember just reading the magazines and trying to study this stuff as much as I possibly could to try to understand you know what made them go up and down what made them go faster what how did they evolve into um, you know at the time uh, you know, like your modern hoppers and dancers. And I'll actually touch more on that, uh, about my history with that sort of thing. But this is just a, a loose, you know, just, just a general discussion of, uh, the differences between these, um, talking about some people that, you know, when it comes to the audience who watches these videos, of course, I have no idea of knowing how much of this you guys already know. So if it's new to you, great i hope you can take something from it and it can help um educate you when you go to build your own car and find your own parts uh guys it's been around the block a couple times that knows all about this stuff just bear with me um and feel free to comment hey if i say something that may not be 100 percent correct please feel free to say hey you know i might your memory might be a little fuzzy and just you know tell me about it i, I don't mind i'm i'm not perfect you know so uh, but yeah, I have an interpretation of how things evolved. Um, these are some of my most prized collectibles. Um, I collect a lot of things actually, but when it comes to the hydraulic stuff, this stuff is really special to me. Um, I had planned on building a setup at one time that was going to use these OG uh, Fenner, uh, Fenner Stone, Fenner Fluid Power pumps. Um, and I wanted to build my car initially like a 70s style. I love that look. I love that era. Um, the music, the cars, the girls, the clothes, everything about it. And I, as I got my 64 that I'm building now, and the more I started thinking about it, the more I realized if I did a setup like this that I'd... I don't think I would be as happy with it as say uh, more modern pumps that are designed for performance. Who, um, you know, let's be honest, the qualities in some cases is better. Uh, this is very, a uh, very niche thing. And some of these parts are, are actually getting kind of hard to find. Um, but, you know, the other thing too is like, I mentioned in earlier videos, when I was younger, um, I actually had a hopper and a dancer. I had a Ford Ranger hopper and I had a Bronco too that was a dancer. Um, some of you out there in YouTube land might remember a fellow by the name of Dean Carnes. 
Uh, he's currently on the TV show Street Outlaws and No Prep Kings, and he's doing the Discovery thing. And uh, my hat's off to Dean, but uh, Dean and I were friends growing up. And when Dean moved on from the low riding world, um, another friend of mine and myself went in and we basically took what he had left and decided to have a go at it for ourselves just to see what things were like. And you're talking about something that wasn't like really um, street friendly. These cars were, sorry, trucks were built specifically for competition. Um, both four pumped, I think the Bronco had 14 or 16 batteries. The Ranger was either 14 or 16 but just really wild, exotic uh, R&D stuff that Dean had did back then. And they wouldn't have made, to be honest with you, they wouldn't have made very good street cars anyways. But the point I'm trying to make out of all this rambling is that they were quick. They were really fast. They were really responsive. And they were purpose built to, you know, just go, go, and go. And I think I want my 64 to be just as reliable to have just, uh, just as uh, well built of a setup. And these pumps can be built uh, for something similar to what I'm talking about. And we'll, we'll kind of get into that with some of the pioneers that made that happen with these. Um, but, you know, your, your limitations here are, uh, they're quite a bit actually. Um, gear selections are pretty, pretty slim. Like, I wanna say it's this pump here I think it actually has like a number four gear, which, you know, back in the day, that was that was kind of what they came with because this this style of pump, uh, if you ever hear somebody talk about a gate, gate pump, lift gate pump, that's exactly what it was. It came off of lift gate trucks, you know, that, that would swing down and be able to lift up into a truck. So you could have like a pallet jack or, you know, a, a dolly and, uh, you know, lift stuff in and out of trucks or even like a tilt bed on a uh, dump bed or stuff like that that's that's where this design originated from and guys got hip to it in the 60s and the 70s um and started putting these things on their cars and i i know this is going to be kind of a tangent you know rabbit hole kind of thing here but like you know obviously before this you had like pescos and you had the aircraft stuff um and that stuff was was is really cool is really cool then it's really cool now um it's incredibly expensive and rare but guys at some point said you know i want the next best thing i want the next you know innovative thing um i want to be faster uh, a guy that comes to mind would be uh andy's hydraulics Uh, Andy's, you know, they were in California and um, very early pioneers in this kind of stuff. Um, guy named uh, Ragtop Ralph Carrillo, I believe that's how you said his last name. Uh, he had a Rag 63 that at one time was a, a world record holding car and he utilized the Fenner stuff. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that you can adapt this stuff. It's just really expensive and it's really hard to find the parts. So that's kind of where we start getting into this side of the, of history. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'll, uh, I'll bring you back. I'm going to lay these things down and we'll go over some of the details and, uh, talk about that more. So hang tight. All right, guys. So we're back. So Basically, in a nutshell, what we're looking at here is, is or something that I want to try and talk about is the evolution of how we got from this to this. Now, even this pump here is, <laughs> believe it or not, it's actually going on about 30 years old, but uh, not much. I mean, I can't say not much has changed. Obviously, you know, technology, you know, everything evolves over time. I don't know better if I stand up and do this. Uh, you know, technology, everything evolves, but... You know, for the most part, you can kind of see, and we'll go in the details of how things progress. So let's just get it started. So this is a Fenner pump, Fenner Stone pump, uh, made by Fenner Stone Incorporated, Rockford, Illinois. Sorry, Illinois. Um, this particular one 
actually both of these are steel blocks. Um, and you know, there's a lot of guys out there that know a way, way, way more of this, uh, more, uh, you know, of this than I do. Um, so please comment below if I mentioned something incorrectly, but I believe these early ones had internal check valves built into them. Um, obviously multiple pressure port and returns. Uh, some of these returned actually to the tank. So like you would have a, a fill and a return. Um, this particular one's only got a, a provisions for one opening. Um, these are very similar to like a early reds. Uh, I want to say styling series or pro, uh, pro series pumps. Uh, somebody correct me again, you know, if I'm wrong on that, but to the, to the best of my knowledge, these right here were the first, you know, for the market, low rider hydraulic pumps. And as a matter of fact, it actually says, sorry, customer low rider, damn it, low rider hydraulics. There you go. Uh, from what I can tell, I think this is a 1977 or 78. I don't know 100% for sure. There's actually, on the sticker there, there's codes and, you know, things like that. But the records are kind of scarce to find on these. Um, it's a pretty good explanation. Uh, 1,500 PSI, 21 gallons per minute. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. So to the best of my knowledge, these are the first built for actually specific for low riding. Now, that that doesn't mean that there weren't companies out there selling hydraulics, uh, hydraulic kits for cars. All I'm saying is to the best of my knowledge, this was offered by Fennerstone as a product exclusively for low riding, okay? Obviously you can retrofit anything, but as far as I know, that's, that's what these are. Um, this older one has a, I guess, I, I don't know that you would call sorry, I don't know that you would call that a belly band motor. I don't think that's what that is. Um, you old school guys will know what I'm talking about. But the point I'm trying to make is that that's an early, that's an early motor, early Fennerstone motor. Uh, you know, still 12 volt. Um, and of course, these are, these are actually Delta dumps. Uh, these are steel blocks. These are actually quite desirable among like many truck guys, uh, guys trying to build period, period correct hydraulic systems. Um, where I'm at here in Ohio, uh, you know, in this area, mini trucking was huge. Bed dancers, tilt beds, hopping trucks, you name it. And a lot of those guys like to run those deltas. Um, like I said, they've, they've become quite desirable nowadays. Are they as quick and responsive as, say, an ADEX or, uh, you know, something like that? Obviously not. Um, sorry, I got a smudge on the camera. Hang on a second. Okay, I think that's better. Uh, so, yeah, those are, those are quite desirable now. Um, this gold, they call this a gold uh, Fenner. You see it says Fenner Fluid Power. Um, from what I understand, this, is, this would be more like a competition style uh, pump head, but again, these are pretty desirable. I actually uh, got this pump from Switches by Jay. Um, he is a huge collector of this stuff. He loves this kind of stuff as much as I do. And uh, so when I told him I was looking for the mat matching pump to go with this, he said, "I got you. I got exactly what you're looking for." Um, and that, you know, of course, that was before I changed my mind and decided to go a different route with my setup. Um, but what I want to show you specifically is about the gears. So I've already got this actually unbolted. And this is this is the big deal about these. So some of these have uh, two bolts that bolt into the block. Some use four. I don't I don't believe all six bolt in. Again, somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. But this is a filter. And uh, you can actually see this right here. I think this is a four, maybe a five. Hell, I can't remember. But it's very, very small. 
in terms of like what we have on modern on modern pump heads even a number nines you know that thick um you know 13s are huge so but you kind of see the evolution of how things started uh with the pump heads uh something else to note is that uh, these tanks so this is one of the filters that jay was able to provide to me for my other pump because it was actually missing off that pump but these also have magnets in the tank for the steel gears to collect um, to collect the shavings that are inside of these pumps over time. Um, you'll get, this one's actually, oh yeah, see that's got a magnet in it already right there. So this one's really clean. It's been well taken care of. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. So being steel geared, um, you would have that problem. So again, this is early on. And then kind of what started happening as the late 80s into the 90s and in the mid 90s, as things progressed, um, you started seeing changes. So like, you know, you could throw a chrome tank on these if you wanted to. Uh, that stuff hasn't really changed. These actually came this way with the black, but as things started getting more, you know, sh on the show side, more pricey, um, companies started offering different versions of of the original Fennerstone. And I've had a few guys look at this pump. Uh, it's actually, from what I can tell, it's actually quite rare because it it's lucky that it survived. Um, it's a mid it's a piece of Midwest history for me. Um, there's a company in Cal in uh, Kentucky that was called Scrub City. And Scrub City was, to the best of my knowledge, they were in, in business before CCE. I hope that's right, guys. Um, but they were based out of Louisville, Kentucky. And um, the guy by the name of Jay Foley. actually had a hijacker hydraulics. He had a dancer that was um, like a, a stock car, <coughs> excuse me, a stock car bodied, tube chassis, basically dirt round track car that he had converted into a dancer. Um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of him dancing that car against like the Joker from Reds. Um, but you know his backstory was he he had Scrub City Hydraulics and they had their brand was Hijacker. Um, Hijacker, of course, now is a part of CCE has been for a very long time. Um, I believe that CCE absorbed uh, Scrub City. I I again I try to remember some of that stuff. You just you know you forget over time. But the point is is that they eventually evolved into CCE. Um, Guys that I've had look at this and try and decode this for me to the best of their knowledge and the best of my knowledge all agree that it's a scrub city. Uh, kind, of, kind of some of the giveaways are this uh, valve stem, pressure relief valve stem is on the side of the block. Okay. And then, of course, you got your, your pressure and your return, um, which are on top. And then you've got your mounting holes are drilled on and tapped on the side of the block and on the bottom side of the block. So that was kind of something that they were doing at the time. Um, I don't know if that was exclusive to them, but that's what they were doing. Uh, this also has a deltas. This is a, a different style with a different, um, Solenoid, yeah, so I think that's what that was. Dump solenoids, I can't remember, guys. It's been a long time. Um, let's see, if it, there you go, Delta products. Um, so again, really, this is really desirable for, for a restoration, but 
this is kind of, this is how I got the pump. Um, it was intact like this when I got it, so I'm I'm just kind of just kind of preserving it like it is. Uh, may use it someday. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But this this was pretty much you know the groundbreaking thing. Not necessarily this company, but the direction that hydraulics and lowriders were going into from this kind of stuff. Um, and of course, you know, before this, you had aircraft and pescos. That whole thing, that's a whole, that's a rabbit hole. Um, so the next thing that happened was, you know, this is just the history that I'm talking about here locally. This is a CCE pump. I believe this is circa, let's call it 97, maybe, all the way into the 2000s. Um, this is just a basic street pump. It's missing the decal. It's come off over time. It had the chrome, <coughs> excuse me, with the yellow CCE, but it's long gone. Um, but you can tell not much changed. Uh, CCE did at one time. I do believe they had the pressure relief valve on the top, but they, you know, of course, have since eliminated that. Um, motors, not much difference. I believe they're the same or you know, very, very similar. Um, CCE though, you know, made it very easy to tell what was the return side and pressure side. And of course this, this is their older logo. Um, you know, I'm trying to date that. I, let's call it 97 to, you know, mid 2000s probably, I guess. Um, I don't have this one apart. Obviously it's still bolted together, but this has got a number nine. Um, you know, and looking at this here, how small that is, the center portion of the pump head here on that number nine is is probably about twice that size. So just to give you, you know, for reference, the difference. Um, nothing wrong with running these. Uh, that's that's kind of one of the other things I wanted to talk about. So let me set you up and I'll spin you around here. Okay, so like I was saying, there's absolutely nothing wrong with running this style of pump, uh, these originals. As a matter of fact, you know, being aside from being very sought after, um, there's guys that absolutely swear by these because they were built for, you know, longevity. They were built for guys that worked nine to five, uh, you know, blue collar that worked every day and had to use them every single day. So they're they're really well built. Um, in the collector side of things, like your guys that build period correct 70s lowriders, even in the 80s, um, they you know they go to the ends of the earth to make these as correct as possible, and I really really appreciate that. I I was kind of going down that path, but ultimately I think that it's for another project. Um, there's a so there are people out there that supply stuff for these. Um, also, something to consider too is. This era of hydraulic pump, guys were transitioning from aircraft into these. So you started seeing pretty unique hydraulic uh, combinations where guys were fitting, let's say, aircraft dumps and not running these deltas. They were running like a um, Whitaker style dump or a Monster Green or, you know, even a, a square dump. Um, so they were retrofitting their stuff onto this newer technology. Um, and that's, of course, all period correct stuff. Uh, a guy that comes to mind right off the top is um, uh, Rano, Rano's. I hope I'm saying that, brother, if you if you ever watch this. DNH Hydraulics. Uh, he's on Instagram. Uh, he, his father, and I believe his brother, they had a hydraulic company back in the day where his dad, you know, would get the aircraft stuff. Uh, he would get stuff for these. He would build entire setups. Uh, long story short, um, he, if you contact him through Instagram, uh, he has period correct parts for these. Um, and then you have just the history in general, like, uh, with guys like, um, Ted Wells. Uh, 
uh, Gary May, um, Ernest House. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on of Pioneers, Andes. who had these pumps. Um, these now, it's hard to believe it because this is the kind of stuff that was out, you know, the end stuff when I was a kid that everybody wanted. These stuff now, this these kinds of pumps um, in this configuration are actually being, you know, guys are restoring setups and making them look period correct, which <laughs> just blows my mind because it still seems new to me, even though it's, you know, going on, 25, 30 years old, which is astonishing, but, um, yeah, obviously, you know, modern pump parts fit on these just fine. Uh, this, this may be, this one may be a little different when it comes to the gear because I think Scrub City was still pretty early on in the lift gate stuff, gate style pumps, uh, when they started their Scrub City company. Um, you know, and then a whole, not a whole lot has changed, like say for instance, from this pump here. I mean, yeah, CCE now offers, you know, different configurations on the pressure and the return. Um, obviously different sizes. You can get up to, hell, what is a three quarter or seven eighths or one inch. I can't remember top four. And then obviously piston pumps, you know, with tanks out to here and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff that they're doing now on these hoppers. And hell, even these street cars with these piston pumps, sometimes dual piston whammy setups, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. But the lineage is here, you know what I mean? Um, so this is kind of just going down memory lane a little bit and just trying to help people understand exactly what it is they're looking at. If you're at a swap meet or you're surfing market, you know, marketplace or Craigslist, if that's still a thing where you are, um, if you see these, pretty much any of this stuff try to save this stuff there are people out there who want this stuff uh not just me but there's a lot of people that look for this era of hydraulics that on their setups so try to save this stuff that way it doesn't get discarded and just thrown away forever um trying to think of other things that might stand out i you know of course i talked about like reds they were very similar configuration on the top Um, some of them had internal, I believe they had internal dumps on those early reds, you know, but a lot of that history is kind of vague for me. I, I there's just so much back then that, uh, everything was rapidly evolving and that's kind of the sad thing about where we are now with the hydraulic stuff. Like, of course there's hoppers, there's competitions, but I mean, like, you know, we had the magazine, we had Lowrider magazine and that was, every issue was. Who's got the record? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? You know, what's the new hot setup? Um, you know, and I believe that drove the industry to be bigger and better and more powerful and uh, provide a better product. Um, you know, you had Pro Hopper, you had uh, Porky's, you had High Low. I mean, High Low's still in business. You had all these, you know, these companies that were just pushing the envelope for what it meant to have, you know, performance and power in your trunk. Um, can you hop a car with these? Yeah, you can. It takes a lot of power, um, and some ingenuity on your, you know, on your part, but it can be done. Uh, let's see. And what else was I wanting to touch on? I'll tell you what, hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, I remember what I was going to say. The performance-wise of these things, yeah, like I was saying, could you make these hop? Sure. You know, guys did it, but... These pumps were designed to run on 12 volts. Um, you know, you can go 24, probably 48s, probably the max. You know, correct me guys out there that's done that. Um, but I wouldn't go no more than that just because how delicate the pump heads are, you know, these motors and stuff like that. Stuff's just not easy to find, but um, they can, you know, they can be built to move. Um, I remember the first time I ever saw a setup actually in person with, with that had these and guys that's never heard these or never seen these in action in person 
uh, it's not like your more modern pumps where, you know, you got that zing, zing, zing. It's really fast, you know, because you're throwing a lot of battery power. These things have a way, way different sound. I mean, they're slower. Um, you know, all everything about them is different. Um, and I like that stuff. I think it's cool. It's it's pretty nostalgic, you know, and it's you can actually hear um, what's going on, you know, in terms of like, lifting and, and dumping um the deltas i don't remember a whole lot of you know difference between this and and this style here because they're even though they're deltas they did change a little bit over time now what i will tell you that changed and i have an example of that is this right here uh this is actually what's commonly referred to as an italian dump and the reason i say that is because right sorry focus well you get the idea it says italian on it um these are supposed to be like blow proof cartridges i don't know how true that is but these are actually still offered for sale now they're not as easy to come by i know cool cars used to carry them I, they still have them on their website but they're out of stock the odds of them getting them back in stock are probably pretty slim um, this was actually, this was NOS for a long time. Uh, when I had, when I had the Bronco, I remember blowing a dump, uh, like exploding it and pulled this out of the bag that it was in. So I only ran this for a short time. Um, and then I can't remember why I pulled it off. I, I don't remember. That was such a long time ago, but this is, this is what changed. Uh, it's aluminum bodied. It's got this uh, oil system, uh, Italian style, blow proof solenoid thing. Uh, as you see, both wires are black, your positive and your ground. Uh, some of these early ones, they're blue. Like this is a, I know it's not focused. It's focused on me, not the pump, but this is blue. Uh, these other deltas here are actually yellow. So, you know, there was all different kinds over time, but, uh, I don't know. I may throw this into use someday. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it on one of these pumps. Um, but as of right now, it's just something I hang on the shelf and show people, you know, who are interested in the, this kind of thing when they come around. Um, so that pretty much covers all this stuff here. There's probably a million things I'm forgetting that I wanted to talk about. Um, but you get the idea. Guys, if you see this stuff, try to save it. Uh, Price-wise, you can pick these up for probably about a hundred bucks a piece. Again, they're not just because something rare is rare doesn't mean that it's expensive, okay? Because it's only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. I don't know why people don't understand that, but these are hard to find. Yet they're not really expensive. So, hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks. Uh, getting into this stuff. They're still so common that they're out there. You know what I mean? A uh, hundred bucks to 250 bucks a pump, probably right now, 2022 prices. And we're almost into 2023. Uh, these dumps on the other hand, though, that's a whole different story. Um, I see these things going for a buck, buck 50, some cases higher, because like I said, many truck guys, they love these things. They put them on their tilt beds, bed dancers, um, you know, so yes, it's desirable, but it's not like it's going to break the bank. Um, all this stuff is serviceable and rebuildable, of course. Um, so just keep an eye out if you see the stuff out there at the swap meets or garage sales or whatever you do when you're looking for stuff. So I guess the next thing we'll talk about now is uh, our speak on it topic. And I, something I wanted to address is... I, I have the speak on a topic, um, and I don't know how many of you actually stick through to the end of these videos to hear that or even care about that. So if you're watching this video right now and you're hearing the speak on a topic, uh, please like leave some kind of emoji in the comments so I can kind of gauge, you know, people are actually watching this part of the video. If not, then, you know, maybe I'll look at doing something different and not doing the speak on it topics. Um, it's just a way for me to talk about things that I think about from time to time when it comes to the stuff. 
And this week's, this video's topic would be, uh, you know, New Year's stuff. Um, what, what plans do you have for 2023 for your build or your car? Or are you going to start a build? Or, you know, are you going to try and start that dream of having your car, your lowrider, whatever it may be? Your Hell, it could be a lowrider bicycle. You know, it could be anything. Um, I'm not a big New Year's resolution guy. I can't, I'll be honest with you, I can't stand that crap. I'm the same person all year round. I don't sugarcoat it for nobody. Um, but I do believe in goals and, you know, having, uh, move into that next phase, that next step, whatever it is you got going on in your life. Um, mine would be 2023 is, uh, <coughs> finishing my chassis, um, getting the motor and trans in the chassis, uh, start the floor pan work, the wiring harness work. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, I'm getting over a little of something. I was outside at work the other day for almost four hours and negative, you know, one, two, three degree temperatures uh, because our trucks were frozen solid trying to get salt on the roads and the cold air and the cold water and the salt and stuff. It just whew, <laughs> about wiped me out, but I'm getting better. So sorry about that. But, um, yeah, that's, that's my goals. I want to try and get the car late summer, maybe to where I can jump in that thing and fire it up. Now that's a pretty lofty goal. Um, but that's something I can work towards. You know what I mean? Kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah. Is it going to be completely done frame off before I turn that key? Probably not. Um, most of the work I'm doing by myself. So if I can get it to a stage to where I can start it and drive it and work on the body as I need to, to get it prepped for paint, that would be acceptable for me. That would be a goal of mine. Um, you know, another goal is, uh, travel more, especially when it comes to the uh, club that I'm prospecting for, uh, dedication car club, shout out to you guys. Appreciate you. Um, I'd like to get out more with those guys, do some more traveling, um, and, uh, just keep this YouTube thing going. I'm terrible at the editing part. So all you out there that gripe about that crap, hang in there. I'm trying to get better at it. Just a one man show here. So, uh, but I would like to do a lot more of this. I like to do a lot more of the YouTube stuff with car stuff. Um, uh, also work my Malibu in the channel. I still have that thing, a G body, um, which is kind of strange. I thought, when I did the Malibu video, I thought there would have been more, more of an interest, but surprisingly it wasn't nearly what I thought it would be, but I don't know. Maybe we'll get out and do some eighth mile burnouts in that thing and full send. <laughs> but anyways, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish in 2023? Um, you know, the slow rider thing is not stopping. I don't know how many of you out there in YouTube land are paying attention to this, but it is not stopping by any means. You have two big factions of the lowrider culture, industry, business side that are right now. Um, I'm not saying it's all negative. I'm not saying it's all good either. All I'm saying is that you got people that are competing for, for you know, this hobby, the sport lifestyle. That's a big deal because I, to be honest with you, for a long time, I thought it was just, I thought it was wiped out and uh, boy, was I wrong. So if you're building a car, shout out below. What are you building? Uh, you're, you're building setups. You Somebody's put a setup together for in anticipation of a future project. What is it? What do you got? Put one of these on a lowrider bike. Guys used to do that stuff on trikes. You young Young fellas and you young ladies out there, that was a thing. Uh, Lowrider Bicycle Magazine. God, I had, I still have them. I just don't know where the hell they are. They're in the garage somewhere, I think. But I had probably 50 issues of Lowrider Bicycle Magazine. And guys would take trikes and put these pumps on the front of trikes and make them hop and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but, you know, what are you working on? What's your, what's your goals for 2023? Uh, so... Again, please, if you watch the speak on it, leave me an emoji, leave me some kind of comment saying, hey, I like the speak on it, or hey, that sucks, don't do it no more. You know, I got thick skin, I can take it. Just 
comment below. Tell me what you think. Um, the other announcement, uh, or I told you I had a big announcement in the last video, and I'll just go ahead and kind of let that out now. I've got some interviews for the channel scheduled um, with some pretty important people when it comes to lowriding. Uh, it's not so much that it's um, like groundbreaking stuff here. I'm just one guy with the channel, but uh, it's pretty important people in the Midwest who were part of this, you know, in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, even in the now. Um, some of them are more well known than others, but I feel that it's important. Um, for me, it's trying to preserve the history of, of this stuff here in the Midwest. You know, California, obviously, the mecca for that stuff, for low riding, you know, Arizona, Nevada, the whole West Coast, the whole the whole scene. But there was a lot, and I mean a lot of people in the Midwest and continue to still be in the Midwest for low riding. And I don't think it's just exclusive to one coast or the other. Um, you know, it stretches all across the U.S. So I want to personally try to document some of those stories uh, get them on, on, on film and, uh, share that with people. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for those. I hope they'll be coming soon. Um, of course, weather permitting that because of the nature of my job, I'm, I'm always busy with that kind of stuff. But when I can get, get that ball rolling and get those on the channel, I will. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, something else I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, which is just mind blown. Cause I never thought that I'd get a hundred, let alone almost a thousand. Um, so might do something kind of like a giveaway for the thousand subscribers deal. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. I know that's a pretty common thing and I, I think it's cool. Uh, so we'll see if I, you know, can do that or not, but I'm almost there. It's Wow, I just blown away. So hopefully I can look on back on this someday and go, man, that was nothing. But for me right now, it's huge. So thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you that watch and comment on these and subscribe and uh, share the channel and uh, connecting with everybody out there. It's it's awesome. So please spread the word. Jim City Welding, um, thanks again for watching. And if you have any questions about anything that we talked about here, anything at all, I don't care what it is. I try to respond to everybody who asks questions. So I'll uh, get another video going next time and keep the channel moving forward. So take care and we'll see you next time. Just a quick shout out to Michael Zubel. He's one of the subscribers to the channel. Thanks brother for watching. I appreciate it.